Data is vital for science in many different ways. It is the uh, validation of our ideas. It contains the measurements of everything that's happened on the Earth in a quantitative way that can be analyzed. And it is also the form from which we generate information about prediction. So there's data everywhere we look. The Research Data Archive uh, started at NCAR more than 40 years ago and has been continuously maintained and grown over that period of time. The purpose of it has always been to support research at NCAR, in other words, provide data that the NCAR scientists need to validate their research and to build understanding of climate and weather. It's now more than 600 different data sets, 2 million files, and nearly a petabyte in size. NCAR is a national leader in this area. They are a leading institution that does atmospheric research. So we need to partner with other facilities like those around the world, both in Asia and Europe, and maintain and assist each other in collecting data and distributing it. ESA stands for Data Stewardship Engineering Team, and it's a group of people who are passionate about sharing scientific research and their outputs with anyone who's interested in learning. DSAT members come from the National Center for Atmosphere Research, and our top priority right now is to design and implement services that will help our community in searching, discovering, and accessing the resources that we have. DSET is currently building a new web-based resource center and it's called DASH, or the Digital Asset Services Hub. DASH is a user-focused infrastructure. What that means is that it provides dedicated and specific services relating to support, training, and education for anyone who is working with digital assets. Access to the Research Data Archive is really quite flexible, and we're very proud of that. We can handle the most beginner user as well as the most advanced with the access to the REA. Let's see, the most interesting data sets within the Research Data Archive. There's so many to choose from. There's over 600, if you can remember. Um, but if I have to choose one just off the top of my head today, I would say the International Comprehensive Ocean Atmosphere data set. It's interesting in this following way. It is a global ocean marine surface weather collection. It goes way back in history, beginning in 1662, and it is current to the modern month. It has all the representations you might imagine, old sailing ships, modern vessels, buoys, and so on and so forth. And it is the foundation data set for almost all climate studies that we now have in the world. So with the coming of digital technology, we are now at the big data era. And by big data, we really mean data are coming faster, with larger volume, with a lot more diversity, and basically just very overwhelming for any individual. But at the same time, there's also a lot of benefits, a lot of values that we can get out of the big data. So with data management, with the improvement of applying data management practices, we can see that we can look at the values of data, take care of them, and ensure that these data are fulfilling their fullest potential for scientific advancement. In the early days, science data was just for the scientist. Now everybody wants data. So more and more we have people coming to us from other fields, biology, other sciences for sure, but even the citizen science. People that are planting crops, growing gardens, wanting to go on a sailing trip, you name it. Everybody wants data to help support the ideas and their adventure for the day or week or month, whatever they have planned. So I see the future for data is growing wider and wider, and we need to develop ways that we can distribute the valuable information, such as we have in the RDA, to a broader audience. That's a challenge for us.